So I love empty flashcards. They're perfect for memorizing things like birthdays to complex things like machine learning concepts. However, the process of creating empty flashcards can be quite cumbersome. Now, traditionally, you would have some piece of text like a page of a paper or a web article, and you want to obtain some information from that text. So what you would do is you would write down the questions and answers manually, which is something that's not scalable and can be quite inefficient. So what I decided to do is I decided to use prompt engineering and do some experiments to find the best prompt to create optimal NK flashcards. We use a combination of ChatGPT, LangChain, and some simple prompt engineering experiments to automate the process of creating Enki flashcards. Now, a while back, I used ChatGPT to automate this process of creating flashcards with a simple prompt like create Enki flashcards from this piece of text. Now, the problem with this approach is that you might run into problems like unreliable questions and answers, the flashcards might not reflect all the information present in the text, and things like repeated questions, which is something I heard from this person that commented on the channel. To bypass these issues, what I decided to do is use a concept from prompt engineering called decomposition, where essentially to facilitate the process for the large language model, you break down the problem into subtasks. In this case, I broke it down into two simple tasks. First, I would like to extract all the relevant information from a given piece of text. And then based on those extracted facts, create the questions and answers that I could then import to Enki. I started by extracting all the facts from a piece of text using GPT-4, the most advanced large language model to date from OpenAI, which served to me as a reference for a correct answer. But my ultimate goal was to actually use ChatGPT for this automation, since it's a much faster model and much cheaper to use when we're using the actual API. To do that, I needed to make sure that the answers obtained with ChatGPT would be reliable. So I also prompted GPT-4 to create a set of prompt candidates that I would then test using the actual ChatGPT API. So I created a set of prompt candidates and also added a few more with variations. And I ended up with a set of 25 prompt candidates. So then I used LangChain to create a set of prompt templates that I would use to programmatically query the ChatGPT API on a given text. So after doing that, I had the following problem to solve. How can I evaluate the quality of the outputs from ChatGPT without manually checking each fact individually and comparing it to the original article? So my solution to this was to use GPT-4 as a kind of a judge that would give a score to each of the outputs obtained with ChatGPT in order to rank them according to how well they extracted the facts from the text. Now, based on these scores, I first generated a bar chart to show all the scores from all the different prompts that I used. And then I just selected the best prompt given the scores obtained using GPT-4. Now, with this best prompt in mind, my second task was to actually create the Enki flashcards. The thing here is that creating the actual questions and answers based on facts is a much simpler task for ChatGPT than actually extracting the facts. So I came up with this prompt that actually worked quite well, and I created something called a sequential chain using LangChain in order to concatenate both of these prompts into one automated process that I could just run like I'm showing here. After running, I was quite satisfied with the results and I considered this task finished. Now, I really like this approach where we're, we can integrate space repetition systems with large language models. And I think there's a lot of potential to explore in these kinds of augmented integrations. Now, I wasn't 100% sure regarding how I was using GPT-4 to evaluate the metrics because that could yield problems. But since I didn't know exactly which was the best approach to take, I decided to just go with this one and and see what happens. For the future, I intend to explore more these use cases of large language models as tools to automate lower level processes. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.